Viewers of the Kill You and a Loser channel, what is good? I am gonna go through your comments that you've left on the channel, specifically ones about dating, and answer them. The more perceptive of you will know that I am not Andy. I am Cameron. I am Andy's co-coach in the Winners Club, which is our private coaching program designed to get guys to the lives they've always dreamed of. And a lot of the time we end up focusing on dating. I think that channel veers towards dating and sex more than other things. And so in that regard, I want to go and answer some of the questions that have been left on this channel. And I want to do this you know, semi-regularly. I've done it before a couple of months ago and it went pretty well. So let's do this again. Valentin Gartner 3793 asks, being a sophisticated fuckboy isn't hard, at least not for me. Oh, congratulations, my friend. But how does one convey that through their pics? I'm guessing pictures, not pics of the girls. I think it's pictures, yeah. Yeah, also the more controversial question, shirtless pics or no shirtless pics? Well, how does one convey that through their pictures? So something we got from Good Looking Loser a long time ago, which I completely agree with, was something called Mr. Juxtaposition. I think I've talked about this on the channel. I think Andy might have talked about it. He might have done a whole video for this article. But it was really about the attractiveness that comes from showing yourself as, you know, someone who's attractive, someone who has that edge about them, someone who looks more like they get laid, like a fuckboy, as some people would say. They have that like masculine looks or they have something cool about them, something like obviously cool, at least in that current, you know, the current social climate, something that would be seen as very cool. But it's in juxtaposition with something more wholesome or something more, you know, high society, I guess is the word. What, what would The one I always remember is a friend of ours. Uh, he is like pretty boy, fuck boy, like very close to model looks. He wears very like edgy, up to date clothing. But one of his online dating pictures is him playing a grand piano. And that's like the, contra the contrast there. You take something that is, you know, more of a high art, high society thing. And you put the fuckboy in that setting. And then you do that. It conveys, you know, that sort of sophisticated fuckboy thing. It's really about setting the scene with the pictures that you take. I think you can do a lot, especially if you have a good photographer who understands that you've got to set the scene for the photo. All photographs are kind of like pieces of art. You have to make sure that the landscape and the background is, you know, in somewhat interesting or in line. I even do this on a fashion level. Like if I get clients who are going for photo shoots, I was like, well, which photos are you taking? Okay, let's get you outfits that kind of make sense in those different settings. And it may mean they have to take a few more outfits along and they may be a little bit different vibe to what they normally would wear, but it's all for setting the scene of the picture so it has maximum effect. Thinking of this very much from like a, an artistic level, not just, you know, like dating profiles or social media, which I feel like is, you know, it's reaching a point where like everyone's having to try as hard as possible. And you, you've got to think of it on that kind of level if you want to get like the, the best advantage out of the impact your pictures will have. So yeah, I would focus on the Mr. Juxtaposition of it. Um, the, the contrast of you looking like an obvious player, but in a more wholesome ideal setting or a more high art society kind of setting. That's what I would go for. I think it's a really attractive look, or at least it has been in my experience in terms of having guys go for that or using it myself in my own profile pictures. He snuck a second question in there as well of the shirtless pics or no shirtless pics. This is an interesting one because I think the era of being able to, you know, throw up a bathroom shot of you with your abs, like you took in the mirror, is kind of over. Oh, there is, we've seen some variations of that that actually work with the idea of you know just taking a gym selfie with like your abs out or whatever and putting it on your online profile the idea of that just like a low effort one working seems to not really be the case anymore you know we've all moved on in terms of like making the profiles look better and you know the the shitty shirtless selfie doesn't work shirtless pictures we've seen tend to work best if they're in like a natural setting where you would be topless so could it, the obvious example would be like the beach um what are obvious examples of that I guess if you're like hiking topless, I've seen guys make it work where they were like, you know, it was a really hot day and they were hiking and they went topless and they've still got their backpack on. That kind of stuff works. Uh, the other stuff would be like, if you're shirtless, but it's in like a model setting. We've got some friends of ours who do like photos where they basically look like models, but they have their like their shirt like fully open. Uh, one of our coaches, Ed, has a really good picture of that when he got himself down to abs and it like, it goes in, almost looks like he's a fashion model shooting in the street. It's a really high level picture. The other ones I was thinking of were like really over the top. Andy has one where he was, it was kind of like a funny picture. I think it was almost, almost tied to his BDSM stuff where he was like really over the top. There was lots of down lighting. It was like he was in a, a photo set 
he had a funny hat on. It was an interesting way of doing it. And I think it worked really well for him. So you can either go really over the top and make it like a model photo shoot, super artistic, or you just go for the natural, you're on a beach, you're by the pool, that kind of stuff. Try and make it seem like a, it's, there's good reason for you to have a shirtless picture of, rather than just doing a selfie in the mirror in the gym bathroom, which is illegal anyway. You should be taking pictures or taking videos you know, in the gym bathrooms, in the gym to changing rooms. People get in trouble for this because they should because other people are changing in there. Don't fucking film in there. Moving on to another one, Paul Vincent 3576. This super direct approach kind of scares me. We really like the super direct approach. But it's probably the most enticing way to go on the other hand. It ensures you actually get what you want instead of playing weird games. It feels like the success rate must be kind of low, right? Well, Paul Vincent, I thought there was actually some comfort in the early times when I first started this, where I thought, yeah, it's going to take ages for me to get anywhere. Thank fuck for that. I need practice. I want to get loads of reps in. Let's just do this direct. Let's kill my approach anxiety. So I was going to Andy and I was like, yeah, I want to do like 500 approaches. Don't care what happens. I just want to get reps in. I want to kill my anxiety. I want to get good with women. And then on the third girl I ever approached, she gave me her number. We went on a date. We went a couple of dates later. We ended up having sex. And then the seventh, seventh girl I ever approached, I can't say the word seven apparently, same thing happened, almost identically the same pattern. I was doing three dates before I tried to have sex with girls that day, those days, really long time ago, but I was a newbie, you know? And then I think, was it inside the first 50 after that, I also got two more girls. So yeah, I thought, I thought this, I thought the direct approach doesn't work at all. I thought it's not gonna be as successful in terms of like, you know, the rate of success wouldn't be anywhere near as high as going more indirect, trying to do what like pickup artists tell you to do, try and be suave, learn to be sophisticated, technical game, blah, blah, blah. No, I, it, it, it can work really well if you just, you know, just the numbers fall in your favor. It can work really well. A lot of guys who are have done a lot of work in themselves to make themselves more attractive, you know, in terms of their fashion as well as their looks. On top of that, they've got like a good social vibe already. Some guys hit it out of the park immediately and the direct approach is all they need. And the direct approach is all most guys need, to be honest. Even if you want to give the other stuff a go, like the stuff that pickup artists go for more often, although most guys I see, even like the most, like, I guess, gamey pickup artists still say like direct authentic approach is good. It does work. So I don't, I don't think the success rate, you're comparing it to like something else potentially. And I don't know what else, what are we comparing it to? What success rate are we comparing it to? Some in some other form of going up and talking to girls other than being authentic and honest about what you want. I, I would like to see what that is. I guess it's like seeing your friends like go up and befriend the girl for like a couple of hours first before trying to make a move, trying to do everything without saying anything. Yeah, those that, that can work. I used to have mates who used to pick up girls. They barely said anything because it was all about like they were drunk and it was dancing at a club and we were all like 19. Like, you know, that's that's the way I used to see guys pick up was like, like without saying any words, just dancing with girls and then taking them home. So it's kind of a weird one where, yeah, we, we've got this idea in our heads that there are like other ways of doing it. But when you're like sober in the middle of the day, what better way is there to go up to a girl and be like, hey, I saw you. I thought you were cute. What's your name? Are you single? Can I have your number? That entire conversation is, you know, going to work as well as any other idea, anything else I can think of. So what do you, I, that's what I ask you. Like, what are you comparing the success rate against exactly? Go and try the authentic direct approach. See how it goes for you. Jimmy, 7434. Jimmy's a great name. We have a good friend, me and Andy, called Jimmy. What do we have to say about performance anxiety due to inexperience? I assume I'll be a poor performer, so shy away from the shame. Uh, you would tell the girl that you are inexperienced and you're worried that you won't do very well that's about it be honest yeah you can be honest and open about it like I, it's, it's it's exactly the same as your own experience um i would suggest here that you don't know you have no fucking idea if you're going to be a poor performer and yet yeah, accept and let go of the idea that you'll be good if you're inexperienced would be a good starting point and this is me i guess this is me i didn't know what it was going to feel like i didn't know what it was going to be like i didn't know if i would be you know able to get my dick up. I didn't know if I was going to be able to, you know, stop myself from coming too early. In fact, I, I ended up having the opposite problem. I, uh, the first year or so, I was one of those guys who basically struggled to finish with girls. And that was something that it that actually causes its own problems. I, for any inexperienced guy out there, 
you might think, oh, not being able to like, not being able to come, not being able to finish. That's actually a really good thing. It's like, it sort of is because, you know, you can keep going and the girl's not going to be disappointed that you came too early. On the other hand, a lot of girls, you know, they want you to finish. They want, they want to give you an orgasm. So like it becomes a, something of a problem for some girls. And some a, one of my girls I was with was very honest about this being like, hey, I want, I want you to feel good. I want to make you come. It makes me feel good. And I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. I, that's putting pressure on me though <laughs> and uh, that was a whole thing of like putting pressure on myself to, like, it was a, it was a long thing essentially to get back to your point I, I i see a lot of assumptions you even say you assume you'll be a poor performer so you shy away from it it's like I, I want you to do what you can to be honest with girls about your inexperience and then let go of the pressure to be good because as an inexperienced guy you have no frame of reference for what good is you have no aim of frame of reference for like what she's expecting of you if you tell her you're inexperienced, she's not gonna, no girl is gonna expect you to be amazing if you tell her you're inexperienced. And we wanted to encourage more guys, if I can remember which video this is on, probably on the, the shame of sexual inexperience. We are trying to encourage more guys to be more honest about it, to be more open about it, because if you lose some girls who don't want the inexperienced guy, you are playing the game instead. Forget those girls, you're playing to win the girl that doesn't care and will be your first sexual experiences. You're playing to win that, which is better than lying to a girl who wants an experienced guy and then having her be disappointed about it. That's what I would tell you. So yeah, kind of try to let go, try to understand you have no frame for any of this or whether or not you will have anxiety until you get there. Like there's so much you can't know until you get there, so much you can't learn from theory and watching videos online. I'll be really frank about that. So this would appear to be the last question, Jack Waterhouse 148 Hey, Andy and Cam. Hi, Andy and Cam. Hello, Andy and Cam, sorry. I'm currently 26 and I've never cold approached a woman in the way you describe. Hey, I thought you were cute. I want to come over and talk to you. I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube that contradict each other. Some people like us say it works while others believe that compliments of any kind don't work. Is it really as simple as saying, hey, I thought you were cute and I wanted to come over and talk to you. So I can't see the future and you know, neither can anyone on this platform, whoever you're watching. And we can't foresee that you specifically, if you go up and use this line, that it will work. What we can tell you is that myself, Andy, our coaches, Ed and Taylor, the guys we've coached, it has worked for them. Andy and I really want to shy away from being like, you need to do this. You should do this. As if we are omnipotent gods who understand all of time to, co time to come and all of time that's been. And we know exactly what's going to work for you in your specific situation. So we can't tell you that this is definitely going to work for you, but we can lay out the evidence for what has worked for ourselves and what has worked for the guys that we've coached in our experiences. And yes, hey, I thought you were cute and I wanted to come over and talk to you has worked for me. And this idea that compliments don't work, uh, I don't, where is, who is saying compliments don't work? Like, so when it comes to approaching, I'm almost of the school of thought that what you say in those first lines doesn't hugely matter. It doesn't matter that you call her cute or you call her sexy or you say that you like her style. All that matters is you show intent and interest. And if you're saying that someone out there is saying that showing interest doesn't work, showing your intent honestly doesn't work and you should be backhanded. Yeah, Andy and I would tell you that's not really, we're not really of the belief at least for ourselves that that works and we've seen guys you know we've seen people try that we've seen we tried it ourselves we tried to be indirect i went through a whole period of using uh, the stuff in the game by like neil strauss and mystery I've, I've done all that stuff the direct approach the authentic approach that andy and i started using is the one that we feel m most strongly towards because it's the more authentic approach it's showing your intent to a girl and the important thing about showing your intent like, hey, you're cute. I want to come over and say, hi, are you single? There's so much intent in that. That's all we want to do. All we want to do is go up and authentically show intent towards the girl that we want to date you. We want your number. We want to either take you on a date now or take your number and take you on a date later. That is all we want to do. We don't. I don't really give a fuck what that line is as long as your intent is communicated, honestly, authentically. Like we say, I keep saying authentic, but that's what we want to do. And we do that at a significant volume that we find enough girls who will hear us say that, will look at us, they'll be like, I like this guy, I'm gonna give him my number or I'm gonna go on a date with him immediately. That is what we want to do. And so no, we don't, we don't give a fuck that there's a compliment in there and we don't, 
I like complimenting girls anyway. If I'm going to compliment girls, it's always going to be the truth. I'm always going to be like, I'm not going to tell a girl I don't think they're cute if they're, like, I don't think they're cute. I'm not going to tell a girl I think they're cute if I don't think they're cute. Uh, as long as it's authentic and honest, it's fine. Um, like, I think if you're, like, on your knees, just, like, showering her with, like, compliments and that's all you do, you don't do anything else, yeah, you're going to get a little bit OTT. This is not what this is. This, as I said, it's just showing your intent immediately going up and telling her that you are seeing her as a potential dating prospect, does she feel the same way? She does, continue conversation. She's still talking to you, she wants to give you a number, you take the number, cool. You have then text a the number, you have the intent to move it forward. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't sit there and compose a fucking sonnet about how beautiful she is, but it's not about that. It's not about the actual compliment, really. As I said, it's about showing intent. And yeah, it is really as simple as this. You can say other things. Like Andy and I don't care if you say other things. I want you to say something that is unambiguous as to what your intent is. So it's saying something like, hey, I like your style can be like friendly, you know? Um, some guys say like, uh, hey, can I, hey, can I come meet you or something like that? And what you want to say, I think that doesn't show enough intent. If you're going to do that, you want to, sh- you want to follow up with a level of intent afterwards. We don't do this whole stuff of like, you know, build comfort, build rapport, all that stuff that like, you know, there's some dating coaches back in the day used to do. We go in fairly fast, fairly direct. We see, we call it, it's like screening. It is screening to some degree because you're going in harder and more direct. So you are going to screen out some girls who I guess don't appreciate that or they don't, they immediately don't really get much from you or they're, you know, which also trying to find out if they're single or not very quickly because if they say they're not single, move on. It's actually to some degree saving you a lot of time as well. The more direct girls you're putting them kind of on the spot to make a decision. They can make their decision and then you just accept the decision and move on, whatever it is. You get a lot less like girls in the maybe ground. Like if you're going to go up, be indirect, kind of be prepared to get fucked around by girls who are maybe in relationships and are just looking to chat to someone and they realize, oh, he actually, he's interested in me. Shit, now I need to turn him down. And you've lost five minutes to that conversation. And you're like, they didn't even realize it was, you know, a conversation about potentially going on a date or that you were interested in them because you didn't show intent at the beginning and it came across rather friendly, and then they flash an engagement ring at you that you didn't notice. Had this happened to me before. So yeah, just be, whatever you say to them, a certain amount of intent, screen if they're interested in you, and yeah, get the number and move on, or if they don't get the number, you move on anyway. Sorry, get the number, go for the date, don't get the number, move on. Do this at a certain amount of volume, we tend to see guys get success fairly quickly, as long as everything else is in check. They don't look ridiculously out of shape. They're not ridiculously badly dressed. They have some level of social ability. But even if you, even if you don't, it's still possible to have success fairly early, fairly quickly. That appears to be all of the questions I have for this one. This was good. I want to do this again when more questions have come in. I want to take the dating questions essentially off the channel. Whenever, so whenever someone has dating questions, like even on the comments of this video below, post your dating questions. I will get to them in later videos. Really good ones might get their whole video to themselves. So try and ask a really good fucking question. But there are also no bad questions, so go for it. I'm going to let Andy's video roll next. Peace out. If you've been wanting an amazing, awesome, elite sex life, tons of threesomes, plenty of wild adventures and great memories with awesome people, we would love to help you get there. Here's just a little bit of what our coaching clients have achieved in their time in the program. Renee had a threesome in just his second week of coaching had a woman write him a love letter and he went on to have sex with 12 women in just 12 weeks of coaching. Corky had his first threesome, slept with seven amazing women and made a ton of awesome memories with them. George and Powell both had sex with 10 women each in their 12 weeks, had a bunch of wild adventures along the way. Join me and join them by clicking the coaching link in the description below.